one of the things that's been great about doing these videos is we have so many different people involved um, and that includes some children who'll be in year three who haven't done any division this year and it will include some children who are in year four who've done division in year three and in year four. Um, now what I want you to do is think about how you can get the most from, from the video. So we're going to do a recap on some of the skills we've done before. You might think, I just need to watch this, I can let it play through, I can answer, I can tell the screen, I don't need to pause the video. That's fine, that's great. I've got a great challenge for you on your independent task at the end. I'd love to know if you can answer that. So more of your time might be spent there. For other children, we're, we're exploring, um, we're using some of the pictures that we've used before. And then we're going to go and we're going to think about camping. And for you, you might spend longer on the video. You might need um, matchsticks or counters when we come to the camping to represent the questions. That's fine. You might spend longer in the video. Whatever you do, just make sure that you take the next step in your understanding um, and let's get started. Now, in this activity, we're going to have a bit of a recap on something that we've uh, representations we've looked at before. Um, and when we're going through, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and it might be that when we pause the video, it will help you to make what you see and use the matchsticks and, um, and really draw those different images. Or it could be you think you understand this so well that you can just picture it in your mind's eye. You don't even need to pause the video. Now, it's up to you. You be the master of your, of your own learning, what you need to do to take yourself forward. Um, but th this is the example we looked at yesterday. 20 divided by 8, and I ask you what might a picture look like to represent that? And, th and, and 20 divided by 8 is 2 remainder 4. So I said it could be that we have how many octagons with uh, 20 matchsticks, and I have two full octagons, and there'd be 4 left over. Or it could be an area model like this. 2 eights and 4 left over makes 20 squares in total. Um, now, if it was 22 divided by 8... Well, what would be different? Well, then I would still have how many whole eights would I have in 22? Well, I'd still have two. This time I'd have six left over, as you can see with these two representations. Now, what about when I add another two and I get up to 24 divided by eight? Well, of course, now I've got three whole eights and, and three whole eights there. Now, it's your turn. 20 divided by six equals three remainder two. Again, you might just tell the screen, imagine it, or maybe you'll pause the video and do a drawing. Um, but what does that look like? How can, I, how can I represent that? Okay, let's, let's have a look at some possible representations. So with matchsticks, it could be, well, how many sixes in 20? One, two, three. That's 18 in total. Two more is 20. Or with an area model, I've got three sixes, and then two more is 20 in total. Well... I wonder if you can explain the mistake. 24 divided by 6 equals 3 remainder 6. What mistake's been made there? Pause the video. Well, I wonder if you noticed it. Um, because if I've got 24 divided by 6, I actually don't have 3 remainder 6, because if I've got a 6 left over, well, that makes a whole other 6. So in total, 3 remainder 6, effectively, of course, it becomes 4. Um, it's the next it's the next whole lot of six, as you can see, with these two pictures. Today, everyone, we are going camping. We're using camping. You'll see the link between these camping examples and um, and the division that we've worked on. I have to say, I love going camping. Recently, it was my birthday and we actually went camping in the garden. It was a lot of fun. Um, so let's have let's have a look. Let's get going. Um, so people camping. Um, let's say there's a big group of people camping. I know we couldn't do that in a moment, but let's say there's a big group of people camping. How many people per tent and how many tents might we need? We might need to think about that if I was planning a camping trip. Well, let's say, let's say it could be this. It could be that if 15 people were going camping, we might need have five people per tent, and that would mean we'd need three tents. So that's, that's an example of um, what a situation could be. Um, I wonder if you can think of your own version, or maybe you can think of two or three versions. So how many people could be going camping, if there's that many, how many per tent, and then how many tents would be needed. Uh, pause the video, so you can come up with a few different answers there. Okay, well, let's have a look at what it could have been. I mean, it could be, for example, if 20 people are camping, they might plan it so that they're going to have five per tent, and that would mean they'd need four tents. I wonder if all of your examples have um, the number of people per tent multiplied by the number of tents need, 
equals the number of people camping. I wonder if that was the case in all, all of your examples, or if anyone had any different ones. Well, how about this? Let's say if 19 people were camping, um, and we were having five per tent. Well, how many tents would we need then? H how would that look different, that picture? look different than, than this one here. So this is 20 people camping, a picture for that. Well, what about when there's 19 camping? Um, pause the video, what will that look like? How many, how many tents will we need now? Well, I'm gonna show you my adapted picture. So rather than having five in each tent and four tents, well, we'll still actually need all four tents. So we'll still need the same number of tents. The only thing is, I will have one less person in this last tent here. So I'll have three full tents and then there'll be four people in this last one. I'll still need the same number of tents. So have a think about this example. 24 people camping, eight per tent, how many tents needed? Have a think about that. Pause the video. Okay, it could be you needed to pause the video. You might have just told the screen, um, and that's that's fine as well. Let's let's have a look. Well, there, I, I would need three tents um, because three lots of eight is twenty-four. Now, the thing for this, and this is a, a key thing for the for some of the last challenges, if you're having a go at task C, is have a look at this. It, it, what about if there's twenty people camping, and eight per tent? Well, how many tents will we need then? Pause the video and have a go. Well, actually, we get back to the same idea that actually I would need exactly the same number of tents. I'd still need three tents because I could have eight and eight. So two tents isn't enough um, for 20 people. So I'd need this third one, even though it might not be full. Now, let's say if 17 were people, people were going camping and there were eight per tent, then I would still need three tents. So if there was one person less, if there was 16 camping, I'd only need two. I just need these two eights. But 17, I, I would need uh, three tents. And I would still need three tents if I went from 17 people all the way up to 24. So if I have eight per tent and there's three tents needed, that's the correct number of tents for all the way between 17 people and 24 people. Now that understanding is gonna be really key, again, if you're coming to those last questions on task C. I'd love to see how you get on with those. So your independent task, as ever, click that blue link underneath this video, wherever you're viewing it from, and it will bring up these options, task A, task B, and task C. Some questions around camping, as ever, the answers are, are there underneath at the bottom. So task A and task B are slightly different. There's just a slightly different level of challenge in the calculation. Um, so again, choose between task A and task B. If you want to extend yourself, particularly on task C, I want to draw your attention to this. Now, I'll be really interested to see if anyone can explain this well. Um, and you might, if you found the video, you could access it quite easily, then the difference between question three and question four on task C. Now, is the answer the same? Is the answer different? And why? I would love an explanation for that. A real really clear explanation or picture to show me is question three and question four the same or are they different okay otherwise whichever task you're doing i hope you get a lot from it i hope the videos have been really really useful and once again i will see you back next week oh, so it's a bank holiday tomorrow so no maths video i'm afraid but i'll be back on monday i'll see you then